Welcome to Lesson 3 of the PTIT Online Safe Driving Course. Please be advised that you will need to watch the video in its entirety in order for the lesson quiz to generate. This lesson will cover Gore, Median, HOV Lanes, Flex Lanes, Emergency Lane, Georgia Moveover Law, Bicycle Safety, and School Buses. Gore, the area of convergence between two lanes of traffic. It is the divider between a highway lane and either an entrance or an exit ramp. Entrance ramps. When a driver is entering the highway, the entrance ramp gradually connects the car with the through lanes of the highway so the driver can safely merge with the traffic on the road. While driving on the ramp and merging onto the highway, on the driver's left there is often a wide triangle shaped boundary created by white lines. This gap, known as the gore area, functions to separate the entrance ramps from the lanes of the highway and to indicate to the driver when it is safe or legal to switch lanes and join the other traffic on the road. Exit Ramps When a car is exiting the highway, the exit ramp often gradually veers to the side of the other lanes and rises above the highway to enable the drivers to safely exit. While the driver is traveling on the exit ramp and veering away from the highway, similar to the entrance ramp, to his left, there is typically a wide triangular shaped boundary marked by white lines. This is also referred to as a gore area, and the area also serves to help ensure safety by separating the exit ramp from the through lanes of the highway and by informing drivers of when they can safely merge on or off the exit ramp. This graphic demonstrates the proper way to enter and exit the highway. Each state and each highway system can establish different laws regarding whether cars can pass through the gore area of an exit or entrance ramp. When the triangle shape is outlined by only one solid white line on each side, it is usually legal to cut through the area to merge onto the through lanes of the highway with the rest of the traffic. If the triangle shape is created with two double white lines on each side, then it is illegal to cross through the gore area and into traffic until the area closes. The entrance ramp merges with the highway and only a single white line or a dashed line is present on the driver's left. Some gore areas are marked with signs that indicate to the drivers whether or not it is legal to cross through the area. Furthermore, when there is an object in the gore area, such as an island or patch of grass, it is illegal to cross through that area. A median is the reserved area that separates opposing lanes of traffic on divided roadways such as divided highways, dual carriageways, freeways, and motorways. The term also applies to divided roadways other than highways, such as some major streets in urban or suburban areas. The reserved area may simply be paved, but commonly it is adapted to other functions. For example, it may accommodate decorated landscaping, trees, a medium barrier or railway, light rail or streetcar lines. HOV lanes, also known as the high occupancy vehicle, carpool or diamond lane. These lanes are normally created to increase average vehicle occupancy and persons traveling with the goal of reducing traffic congestion and air pollution. The following are vehicles that may ride in the HOV lanes. Vehicles with two or more persons, living and not pre-infant. Pets and infants still in the womb are not considered as passengers. Emergency vehicles such as law enforcement, fire, and emergency medical. Motorcycles, buses, and alternative fuel vehicles properly licensed with an AF license plate. Then we have flex lanes. These are lanes in which traffic may travel in either direction depending on certain conditions. These lanes are meant to improve traffic flow during rush hour by having overhead traffic lights and lighted street signs that notify drivers which lanes are open or closed during driving or turning.
Welcome to UDOT's video simulation of the 5400 South Flex Lanes Corridor. Here you will learn about Utah's first flex lanes and how they will ease rush hour congestion. This section of 5400 South between Redwood Road and Bangadore Highway experiences significantly more cars traveling eastbound in the morning while more cars travel west in the evening. We begin our first scenario with our motorist making a right turn from Bangadore Highway northbound onto 5400 South eastbound during the morning commute. Notice the overhead sign structures supporting electronic lane indicators. The lane indicators will be spaced frequently along the corridor to ensure motorists can see them at all times. The indicators will change throughout the day to reflect each lane's direction or function. This first configuration is for off-peak traffic hours. The three green arrows show which lanes are for eastbound motorists, white arrows indicate the center two-way left turn lane, and the three red X's are for lanes with opposing traffic. The yellow X indicates this lane is in transition from a traditional lane configuration to flex lanes. A red X will follow, indicating that the motorist should no longer be in this lane. Now we see there are four lanes open to eastbound traffic and the center turn lane has moved over one lane to the left. This will improve traffic flow during the morning commute. The next configuration shows the transition back to off-peak lanes. The yellow X's indicate these lanes are in transition and motorists need to merge right. Motorists will have about a minute to complete their transition. Now we're back to the off-peak configuration. Next, we would like to show you what a motorist traveling eastbound will see during the evening commute when most traffic is headed westbound. Again, the yellow X's indicate that these lanes are in transition and the motorist needs to merge right. And finally, here is the flex lane configuration for the evening commute. Let's go back to our motorist who is traveling eastbound during the morning commute. As he crosses 3600 West, he enters the Flex Lanes Corridor. You will notice our motorist is beginning to merge left. That's because he sees the newly available Flex Lane as indicated by the green arrow above. Let's watch as it transitions back to the off-peak configuration. The middle lane indicators turn yellow as a warning that the lane direction will change. The driver moves to the right, completing the transition. Take a look at the lane striping. The double yellow skip lines identify which lanes are flexible. The white markers are for the lanes that do not change. Our motorist is now traveling westbound on 5400 South. Driving this direction in the flex lanes is essentially the same. As you can see, the overhead lights indicate there are four westbound lanes open. At about 3600 West, the lanes convert back to a traditional configuration. You can remain in the left lane to turn south onto Bangor Highway or merge right to continue on through the intersection. Many corridors and freeways throughout the country successfully use flex lanes safely to reduce traffic congestion. Like many of Utah's roadways, flex lanes will be monitored and controlled from the UDOT Traffic Operations Center control room, ensuring motorists a safe and easier commute. Thank you for taking the time to learn about flex lanes, a safe, cost-effective solution to improving traffic flow during rush hours. Then there is emergency lanes. 
These lanes are specified for emergencies. This would include the shoulder of a highway. In the event of an emergency or breakdown, a motorist can pull into the shoulder to get out of the flow of traffic and obtain a greater degree of safety. If there is an emergency on the highway, the emergency vehicles, for example, police officers, fire trucks, ambulances, or DOT workers may use the shoulder to bypass traffic to get to the emergency. Georgia Move Over Law The Georgia Move Over Law requires drivers to move over one lane when possible if an emergency vehicle with flashing lights is parked on the shoulder of the highway. If traffic is too heavy to move over safely, the law requires drivers to slow down below the posted speed limit instead and be prepared to stop. This law was passed in the aftermath of a growing numbers of police, emergency technicians, and DOT workers being killed during routine traffic stops, crash responses, and highway construction projects around the nation. More than 30 states have move over laws on the books with fines that range as high as $1,000 or more in some jurisdictions. The move-over fine in the state of Georgia can be up to $500. Failure to obey the move-over law can lead to consequences far more serious than fines. According to FBI statistics, traffic crashes claim lives of more police personnel than any other cause of death in the line of duty, including shootings. Reports show emergency vehicles of all types have been struck while parked beside Georgia highways, even while their emergency lights were flashing. Whether our lights are flashing red, or blue, or yellow, when we are assisting you on the road, or trying to save your life on the side of it, protect us and give us some room. Move over or slow down. Because when your car's broken down, or you need our help. Wouldn't you want the same protection? Protect us, it's the law. We protect your family, help us protect ours. Move over, save a life. Emergency vehicles. What counts as an emergency vehicle? An emergency vehicle could be an ambulance, fire truck, police vehicle, or a privately owned vehicle used by firefighter or life support agencies. If any of these vehicles are behind you and have their sirens activated and lights on, you need to clear the path for them. Time is the enemy in any emergency. You can help emergency responders get to the scene as quickly as possible by following the rules of the road. When an ambulance, police car, or fire truck is behind you with their lights and siren activated, clear the intersection. If driving on a road with one or two lanes, move your vehicle to the right side of the road. Remember to use your turn signal. If driving on a road with three or more lanes, clear the intersection and move your vehicle to the nearest side of the road. Remember to use your turn signal. When in the center lane, drive your vehicle to the right side of the road. Come to a complete stop and wait for the emergency vehicle to pass you. Shoulder check to make sure there are no more emergency vehicles or other drivers approaching before you continue driving. Be considerate of other drivers as you re-enter the traffic flow. Remember to use your turn signal. Keep at least 150 meters between your vehicle and the emergency vehicles that just passed you. Thanks for following the rules of the road and helping emergency responders get to the scene as quickly as possible. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration provides a set of steps under the acronym SIREN to help drivers understand what they should do whenever approached by an emergency vehicle. The SIREN protocol is as follows. Stay alert. As a driver, this is something you should be doing at all times. However, you should place special emphasis on listening to your surroundings so that you can hear emergency vehicle sirens or horns. 
This means paying attention to the road, keeping the music down in your car, and possibly even driving with your window cracked to better hear outside the vehicle. When you hear an emergency vehicle siren, look to see where it is on the road. Investigate. Look in your rear view mirror as well as on the sides of your car to gauge how fast the emergency vehicle is going and to figure out what you will do next. React. Pull over to the side of the road safely, signaling as you do so to alert the driver of the emergency vehicle of your intentions. Though it's important to react quickly, you shouldn't put yourself or anyone else in danger. After pulling over, wait until the emergency vehicle has passed and look for others. There may be more than one on the way. Enter. Next, re-enter the roadway. Be sure it is safe for you to get back on the road, then signal and merge with traffic. If you are on the side of the highway, be extra careful as you will need to get up to freeway speeds. Never. There are a few things you should avoid doing in this situation. Don't pull over or stop somewhere if there isn't enough room for you to do so safely. You should also never follow an emergency vehicle or try to pass one. Remain a minimum of 500 feet behind a moving emergency vehicle that has its lights and siren on. For many drivers, it can be scary trying to pass someone on a bike. And as someone on a bike, it can rattle your nerves to have someone buzz past you in a car. Hi, I'm Officer Fromer with the Roswell Police Department. Together with Bike Roswell, we'll explain the three-foot law and how it can be used to keep everyone safer as we share the road. When you take into consideration traffic conditions, the layout of the road, and the speed and size differences of a car and a bicycle, it can be hard to pass a bicycle and know how far away you need to be from it. This is critical, since a vehicle getting too close or striking a bicycle can have disastrous consequences. Georgia's three-foot law states, when feasible, the operator of a motor vehicle, when overtaking and passing a bicycle that is proceeding in the same direction on the roadway, shall leave a safe distance between such vehicle and the bicycle and shall maintain such clearance until safely past the overtaken bicycle. Now that sounds confusing, so let's break it down. According to the law, a safe distance is not less than three feet. So if a vehicle is going to pass a bicycle traveling in the same direction, the vehicle should leave at least three feet between the mirror and the bicycle until it's completely past the cyclist. Three feet can look a lot different when you're driving in a car, but you can use existing street markings as a reference point. If you approach a cyclist riding next to the white line, in most vehicles, you, as the driver, can position your vehicle so that the driver's seat is at least over the center line. This will ensure that a safe distance has been given as you pass. Here's a view from the driver's seat. Now let's look at it from a different perspective. If you're on a hill or a curve where your visibility is reduced, then do not pass. Take your time and wait for a chance when your visibility is not compromised and there is no oncoming traffic. Remember, the three-foot law does not relieve cyclists of certain responsibilities as laid out in these code sections. This includes riding as close to the right side of the roadway as possible for most situations. There are times when a cyclist may move towards the middle of the lane to prevent passing if there's a hazard ahead or they're about to make a turn. It's important to remember that circumstances can change quickly when operating a vehicle around a bicycle. Your safety and the safety of others depends on paying attention and using sound judgment, and this applies to drivers and cyclists. The three-foot law, when used properly, can keep everyone safer. For more information on bicycle safety, visit bikeroswell.com and roswellpd.org. It is very important for cars and bikes to be aware of one another on the road. If each party has an understanding of their responsibilities, as well as knowledge on what the other one is doing, there should be less issues and accidents. Here are a few bike safety tips for cyclists and automobile drivers on bicycle safety. Like drivers, cyclists also use signals. It is just as important for a driver in a vehicle to be aware of these indicators. Here are the appropriate ways for bikers to use hand signals. Left turn. Extend your left arm straight to point left. 
right turn. Either extend your left arm out with your forearm pointing up, your elbow joint should be creating a 90 degree angle, or extend your right arm straight out and point right. Stopping. Extend either arm and point your forearm down. Your elbow joint should be creating a 90 degree angle. Slow down. Sometimes it is necessary to gently remind drivers that you are on a bicycle and not in a vehicle. Instead of yelling, gently wave your hand by your side to sign that you would like them to slow down. To depict that you need more room, gently wave your hand up from your side. Identifying road hazards. This can be done by bikers by pointing or waving in the direction of the road hazard. This will help give attention to an obstacle in the road and lower risk of accident. School buses, six point violation in the state of Georgia. If traveling in the same or opposite direction of a school bus displaying red or amber lights flashing and or has a stop arm out, you are required by law to stop. This includes two lane highways, multi-lane highways, multi-lane highways with turn lanes, and traveling in the same direction on divided highways. You may not proceed until the school bus begins to move or the visual signals are no longer activated. The only exception is when traveling in the opposite direction on highways divided by a permanent median such as grass or a wall. If traveling in the same direction on divided highways, you are still required to stop. Welcome back to the Morning Rush. Yeah, it's back to school for Hall County, Gilmer, and Clark County today. And with the school year back in action, you know you're going to see a whole lot of school buses getting back on the road. So let's go over the rules about passing school buses, okay? When you're on a two-lane road, both sides have to stop, no questions. Now, when you're on a multi-lane road, but it's paved across, again, both sides have to stop. Here's the only exception to the rule. When you're on a multi-lane road, but there is an unpaved area in between, like say grass or a raised median, the side with the bus has to stop. The other sides can go along their way, but do so with caution. What to do when approaching a school bus? When a school bus stops, the flashing red lights go on and the stop sign flaps come out. Drivers in both directions are required to stop. This is the most dangerous time with children getting on or off the bus. It is against the law to pass the stopped school bus with its flashing red lights activated and stop sign arm extended. Never pass on the right side of the bus where children enter or exit. This is illegal and can have tragic results. If on a two-lane road, all traffic in both directions must stop. If on a two-lane road with center turn lane, all traffic in both directions must stop. If on a four-lane road without a center median, all traffic in both directions must stop. If on a divided highway of four lanes or more with a center median, only traffic following behind the bus must stop. This concludes lesson three of the safe driving course. Please proceed to take the quiz in order to move on to lesson four.